Hello everyone, welcome back um, to another GeoFS video and today I'll be showing you how I use um, Autopilot++ and FMC to fly where I want to. So uh, today um, I prepared a route flying from uh, KLAX, uh, Los Angeles International, all the way uh, up to San Francisco. So a short flight but it'll be a great demonstration. Um, I added a ton of uh, extra waypoints and stuff so you guys are in for a treat. So. Um, let if you, first of all, um, let me get what the other hat. If you don't have uh, Autopilot Plus Plus or FMC, so if you don't see like a green FMC button or this desk thing, don't worry about the route thing. That's that's unrelated. Um, even if you have FMC, don't worry about it. And if you open up the nav panel and you don't see Autopilot right here, then I want you to go down in the description and look for how to get um how to get uh Autopilot Plus Plus and FMC. And that's going to be, um, and that'll take you to a video. I recommend you watch it, and um, it'll help you uh, get ready for this. So let's get started. So I've made a Google map of um, all of our waypoints along the way. So these over here are all going to be uh, waypoints. And starting off from uh, Los Angeles all the way up to San Francisco. So um, what we're going to be doing, so I kind of take this visual image in your mind, is we're going to kind of, and uh, sorry about this black line. I think that I think it's a book. So we're gonna take off from this runway and then kind of just make our way up north until we get um, up to about like level with San Francisco, and then we're gonna kind of just make a big loop around right into runway two, right into runway ten left at San Francisco. So keep that in mind. Um, that's um, and uh, yeah, I'll also leave. Um, this uh, Google My Map and the FMC route down in the description. So let's get, um, first, how do we um, get routes? So let's open up uh, the flight management computer and you'll see that our waypoints, our departure, our everything isn't filled out at all. And so while we think we may have to fill this all out, you actually don't. There is uh, one tab up here called the load tab. And so what, what this does, if, if you paste it in a line of code, and this will be down in the description, you'll just paste it in. And what this will do is this will pretty much um, set tell FMC all your waypoints and automatically load it in. So um, over here, it's um, it's not really like a language; it's just a format. So we have like our one way, our runway, our coordinates, and then a couple of booleans and values to fill out. So this is really important. Make sure you clear. Make sure I mean, make sure you click this arrow button. Do not click generate route or do not click clear yet. So I guess let's just kind of go over tab to tab. So First, let's um, just double check the RTE tab. You saw that one in. So if you go to the RTE tab, just like that, everything is filled in. And you should be able to um, go in the description, get that same uh, big um, chunk of code and paste it into the load tab. And so we're chilling. So let's go to the log tab. The log tab isn't really too important. It'll just show like, uh, like basic stuff, like flight paused, flight this, this, like um, just a ton of like, um, like just a log, really a flight log, like brakes turned on, flaps set to here, gear down, gear up, uh, pretty basic stuff. So um, let's move on to the, um, let's go on to the prog tab. So the prog tab is really useful in flight. It'll show you how far away your destination is and your top of descent. And I'll get into that, um, I'll get into that later. And also, once we um, have selected our first waypoint, it'll also show how far you weigh in nautical miles and in uh, time, like how many minutes are you are away and your arrival time to that uh, to that waypoint. So um, let's move on to the legs tab. So the legs tab pretty much will just give you a um, view on all your waypoints and how far away they are. And um, it'll um, it's pretty precise. It'll count down each like um, tenth of a nautical mile, and I'll show you that once we're in the air. So now let's move on to the RT tab, which is probably one of the most important tabs in the entire thing. So this shows all our waypoints. Here we can modify our waypoints, we can do anything we want. But the first thing we're gonna wanna do is click the Save Waypoints button. So that means if we ever get kicked out, all we need to do is click Retrieve Waypoints and it'll fill all this back in. So another thing that's really important is you wanna make sure you have your departure and your arrival um, filled in. Your flight number doesn't have to be the exact number, it could just be anything, but make sure you do have something in there. So you'll see that um, over here, we have um, under altitude, we have uh, nothing filled in there. And it'll make a lot of sense once we get to the VNAV tab. 
So I was talking a lot about selecting our first waypoint earlier. So usually, um, or not usually, most all the time pretty much, the waypoints will be in order. So if we go to the uh, map, our first waypoint should be uh, any. So let's zoom in and our first waypoint right here is any, would you look at that? Let's go back and let's select it. And by selecting this, this tells the flight management computer and autopilot to that that's our first waypoint we're going to. So as you can see, we were just on heading mode. Now we're on latitude and longitude mode, and it's filled in the latitude and longitude coordinates from the flight management computer. So they really like work together. They're, it's a really they're coded really smart. So uh, yeah, and then once we reach this anyway point, so let's go to the legs tab. You'll see this blue. That means it's automatically selected. So once we get to any, once we get to any, then it'll automatically check the next waypoint. And then the next waypoint, the next waypoint, the next waypoint, all the way until we're at the end and we turn off autopilot for a landing. So we, so checking this is probably one of the most important things that we can do. And let's go ahead and save that again. And that's all filled in. So now let's go to uh, the ARR tab and I'll start talking about top of the descent. So when you're, um, I'm sure you know this, most airplanes, um, they climb then they cruise and then they descend. Now, climbing isn't doesn't have to be as precise as descending. Like once you get to a certain height, that really isn't as important as once you get to it once you get to a certain like when you land. So, there's a formula that calculates the top of descent. And the top of descent is um pretty much where you start to descend. So, um it's calculated by a formula. I don't know it off the top of my head. But what we do if we enter our arrival field elevation, and that's going to be the elevation of our arrival airport. So let me go uh, look that up actually. Okay, so I just looked it up and that's going to be 13 feet and I'll leave a website that has all the airports and you can search up an airport, every single airport and it'll show your show it the field elevation there. So let's go ahead and enter 13 feet and then let's click automatically calculate top of descent. So this will automatically calculate it. So if we check that, then it'll automatically calculate it. And you can only um, calculate it. Um, you can only calculate top of descent once you're cruising. So once we're cruising, then you'll see that um, this uh, will fill in. And as you can see right there, the next waypoint got filled in because we selected our first waypoint. So yeah, that looks good. Now let's go on to VNAV. So VNAV is a very vital tab and this will show, it's pretty much stands for vertical navigation. So here we can enter our cruising altitude. And for this plane, um, I think it was 35,000 feet. If I'm wrong, oh well, 35,000 feet and we'll select that. So this, what it'll do is it'll automatically um, fill it in. So there, you just saw that right there, 35,000 feet got filled in. It sent uh, the cruising altitude here. So this is the altitude that we're trying to reach. And if we turn on VNAV, it'll manually go over how, um, it'll manually, uh, or not manually, it'll automatically tell uh, the VS what number to be at. And the VS um, is a number that represents your feet per minute. So in how many feet per minute are we kind of angled up? So like, it'll be like sometimes 2,400 or like 1,000 or 500 feet per minute. And it'll automatically adjust this depending on how, how we get. And also you want to turn VNAV on if we have altitude filled in here. So like if this was like over here, we want to be at 5,000 feet, then 10,000 feet, and 15,000. Then it, that would only work and it would only be automatically filled in if VNAV was on. So VNAV is important in that sense too. And um, then this is the last thing, uh, this is speed control. So speed control, it really depends um, what you want to do with it. Uh, speed control will like slow itself down on sharp turns and um, like slow itself down on sharp turns, it'll automatically select your cruising altitude. But if you already know like what speed you want to be at, then you can leave it off and it won't harm. And also this phase thing right here will just show what phase it is. So climb, cruise, or descent, we're obviously in climb. And um, we can also lock it. So like um, if it switches back, we can click this lock button and then it won't switch back at all. So let's go and set that to climb. We don't want to lock it. And yeah, those are all the tabs. So um, there we go, would you look at that? Um, we're, all ready to, we're all ready to go. So before we get started, before we start um, taking that, before pushback, let's go ahead and check our legs one more time. We just want to make sure that all our waypoints are entered and it doesn't look like there's any big gaps since this is a small flight. It shouldn't be anything over 50 nautical miles. Um, just double check that. Um, and then after that, you're 
ready to go. So, um, let's click save waypoints one more time. I don't know. Um, and so another thing, speed control will only take place, um, will only like take place once you actually like start in the air. So I want you, once we're taking, when we're taking off, I want you to really pay attention to the VS and the speed. So let's um, get started, shall we? Let's go, I'm gonna go to uh, four flaps for takeoff since this is at eight flaps, that's crazy. I'm gonna turn the engine on, brace your ears. Okay, and looks like we're ready. So another thing I want you guys to know about is that there's two types of controls. Uh, that's camera options. Let's go to controls. You'll see that, sorry camera. You'll see that there's uh, three types of controls. Uh, joystick, mouse, and keyboard. Joystick, if you don't have a throttle, um, it's pretty pointless and I might get a video if I even think to get one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select mouse. And so I like to um, take off and land with mouse. Again, it's a complete personal preference, however you've played, whether it be with keyboard. But one thing that's gonna be really important is once we're in the air, right? Like let's say we have to, oh, let's engage autopilot. If we move our um, throttle over here, the plane's gonna go completely sideways and we do not want that to happen. So what we can do is I want you to look right here. If we press K on the keyboard, it'll switch to keyboard. Or another thing we can do is we can press and hold M and you'll see that right here, it'll be mouse off and they'll pretty much disable mouse controls. And then we can just click it again or um, we can press and hold M and then um, that'll bring it back. Another good thing is you can go into graphics right here and click show mouse yoke. And um, if it, and that's how you get this little yoke right here. And then uh, that's a good way, that's another way to tell like if you have uh, your mouse on or off, if, it, if, if it's your cursor or your um, throttle. So, Looks like everything's good. Um, our controls are our mouse. That's exactly what we want. Um, we'll save and close and open up the navigation panel. So, yeah. Um, again, um, pay attention to uh, the speed and the uh, VS, uh, vertical feet per minute. So let's go ahead and take off our brakes. Um, oh yeah, and another thing, in the keyboard controls, um, these keyboard controls work even if, like, you don't have, um, even if you don't have, um, any, even if you don't have it, like, selected. So these will also work. So, like, um, right now I don't have it selected, but if I press, um, semicolon for parking brake, look at, uh, brakes right here, I'll click semicolon and brakes on, and we can turn them off. So that. And so, what I recommend is, um, I recommend you definitely have something on for your, um, uh, autopilot so you can turn that on and off too if you want but it's not completely necessary so um let's uh take off so i'm gonna go um 70 percent power nope not 90 70 percent power and let's just kind of that's 80 percent it's fine let's just steer our way and um get to around 150 knots that's when most uh airliners will take off and then um yeah we're here. 125 and 150 about let's pull up we're off the ground look at that so let's click G let's let's click G gear up put our wheels up and I like to engage autopilot it really depends when your first waypoint is but um, I don't really care about that. I'll just um, wait till I get around uh, a couple uh, thousand feet high and once I'm off the runway. Like if you look at the navigation, if you look at um, the navigation panel, you'll see that we're still like above the runway. But um, in reality, I want to just, I would just want to get like, um, so let's, let's try and get to the ocean and then let's reduce our flaps down to zero and then try and get leveled and then uh, turn our autopilot back on. That's going to be the game plan. So we're getting close and let's see that looks good so i'm gonna go um flaps level zero i'm gonna press k for keyboard controls and you'll see that the plane is starting to level off right here and then let's click uh engage autopilot so autopilot isn't engaged until you tick what you want to be engaged right so there's our turn we're turning towards our first waypoint and uh there's our speed. Our speed automatically got filled into 200 knots. And this is um, 
indicated airspeed, not um, true airspeed. So this is uh, indicated airspeed too, and I'll go over what that means. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit, and let's open up um, the legs tab. So as you can see right here, if we zoom up, um, again, it's counting. So we're um, 1.9 nautical miles, and you'll see once we reach that waypoint, we're gonna turn to the next one. So flying is really just like connecting the dots. The waypoints are the dots, and then our plane is, is, is like the pencil. So we just hit a waypoint and you'll see we're turning, right? And sometimes it'll reduce speed. It depends on how harsh the uh, uh, the waypoint turn really is. So now we're pretty much uh, safe just to leave it, but I'm gonna um, wait until we get to cruising altitude. And another thing, I'll show you how to read uh, the altimeter right here. So instead of it being a number, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Think of it like a clock. So this skinny one right here, um, oh, there's another waypoint. Which waypoint was that? And again, uh, legs like doesn't show the previous ones, but you can just go to the RTE tab and then look at um, which waypoint is checked. So that was T A C H, and we go coming up on Milbu. So the skinny. Um, so I'll go over what each of the hands represent. The skinny hand represents ten thousand feet. So if just by looking at the skinny hand, we can already determine between zero and one. But since that's ten thousand feet, then that means we're in between zero feet. And 10,000 feet and then it pretty much just uh, keeps going down from there so the short fat one represents thousands so we're in between 7,000 and 8,000 feet so we're and that and seven in between seven and eight thousand feet is also in between the zero and the 1,000 feet so we just want to check that out and then as you guess this one is the hundreds feet so that's in between that's at um, the nine let's just say that was at the nine and we were in between the eight eight and seven so that means we were at 7,900 feet just by um, just by uh, looking at the altimeter. So that's how um, you read it. And again, if you need, if you have like any questions, uh, leave them in the comments section and I'll reach out to you. Um, so let's, um, so looking at the altimeter, we're getting closer to the one. So that means we're at, um, we're at 10,000 feet, uh, pretty close. So let's look at the progress tab. Um, again, this will show you in minutes too. And all right, there's another waypoint. I have a lot of turns in here. This is a roller coaster. Um, do be coming up next. That's in uh, like 17 nautical miles, and the progress shows like how many minutes we are. So we're uh, four, uh, we're four nautical, we're four minutes. Sorry, away from the next one. And um, yeah, this also um, another thing about um, this uh, desk thing in the top of the Senate, it will show how much time it takes and what time. But keep in mind that this is in military. So sorry for us living in the U.S. So. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and pause, and I'll see you once we reach cruising altitude. Okay, so um, welcome back. We're um, at thirty, like thirty-two thousand five hundred feet, and um, that's pretty close. That's like two thousand five hundred feet away. You've seen our vertical speeds um, been reduced, and um, again, um, so if you like look at our camera over here, we'll see that we're kind of pointing noseward, and this dial right here shows how how high your nose is pointing. So zero is like if you're on the ground. So let me just camera reset. So I want to talk about uh, the difference between IAS and uh, TAS. So first you've seen our speed is automatically switched over to Mach, right? And most planes, you know, cruise at about like 400 to 500 knots, right? Or at least like 737s and A320s. However, if we go to our knots right here, you'll see we're at 274. So how does that make sense? The thing is, when you hear of um, like that 400, people are really talking about TAS, not IAS. So TAS stands for true airspeed. IAS stands for indicated airspeed. So your indicated airspeed and your true airspeed are really different. In um, again, this dial right here is um, indicated airspeed too, and it has something to do with uh, like the air molecules and the um, and the uh, pressure and all that stuff. It also depends on your altitude. And there's a really good video that um, explained it really well by a pilot, and I'll leave that in the description as well. And I'll also leave um, a uh, a chart that shows um, like the cruise speed reference. So like right now we're at Mach 0 0.75 or 78. There we go. Um, one sec. Um, so uh, our vertical speed just got reduced. So um, we're getting close. It's going to tick really slowly, but we'll but uh, we're gonna try and get level. And as you can see, we're just a little bit off the off the um, zero right there. So 
So as I was saying, um, it'll show you like um, like um, it's like a chart. So like you'll be like your alt find your um altitude, and then from there find your speed, and then it'll show you the indicated airspeed and the true airspeed. So it's really useful to figure out, and you can also just like Google it up. So right now we're in a, a Boeing 737-700. So I could just look up um, Boeing 737-700 cruising altitude, and it'll say okay, 35,000 feet. I'll put that in um, FMC, and then um, I'll also look up cruising speed, right? And that'll, and you just have to say cruising speed in knots, and it'll give you the true airspeed, and then you'll be like okay, like 400 something, and then we can go. You can go look on that chart. And then you can find uh, your altitude, uh, your Mach speed, and then um, you can just uh, look down the chart and find your true airspeed and your indicated airspeed. So that's a, a really useful chart. Um, I'll use it for every flight. So I'll leave that, uh, I'll leave that video and I'll also leave the airport's reference um, down in the description. So um, looks like we're just about at 35,000 feet. Um, uh, now we can pretty much just uh, enjoy the views. Ooh. Sorry, cockpit's loading up and we hit a waypoint. How crazy. So, yeah, these wing views are really nice too. I want to get HD, like, really bad. No. But, um, yeah, so, um, our cruising speed, um, even though we have, uh, speed control on, sometimes, um, in, like, bigger planes, like a 777, 8350, 787, I'll have to turn speed control off then mainly put in the speed, and then once it's time for our descent, then I'll turn it back on. And as you can see, our phase automatically switched over to cruise. So our legs tab, um, you'll see that, okay, 34 nautical miles. And if we look at the progress tab, now it'll give us the top of descent. So our top of descent is gonna be in 176 nautical miles. And if we go to the ARR tab, it'll show, so once we reach 119 nautical miles, that's our top of descent. So we'll just be looking out once we get to 119. And um, so that's going to be in uh, 23 minutes. Oh my god! And then um, our destination is going to be in about 48 minutes. So cue the time lapse, I guess. Alright, so um, we're getting pretty close to our top of descent. We're at 125. Remember, we were said to be at 119. 
uh, five nautical miles, one minute away. So, um, the thing is, since um, since we don't have any altitude for this one, what um, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the runway waypoint. So if you don't have a runway waypoint, then um, you might have to adjust just to see like how um, far away it is. So two nautical miles, getting close, and then um, let's see, two nautical miles and one nautical mile. Come on. And then once we reach uh, zero, we're at 120. There we go. So now we're at zero. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the RTE tap, and I'm gonna set this to like 100 feet, because this is right at the beginning of the runway, right? So um, there you go. 100 feet got filled in, and we're there. If we go to VNAV, we're on our descent, and we're starting to nose down. And our uh, clock is altitude altimeter is taking backwards. So yeah, now we're. Um, Getting close to the end. And again, you just want to double check. Let's go to our map real quickly. And um, yeah, this line isn't connected to this uh, runway waypoint. Kind of buggy. Um, this runway waypoint is going to be right like at the front of the waypoint. So if we're like 50 feet high, then we have time to flare and then um, land. And by the way, a flare is um, so right as you're about to land, you're going to kind of pull up on the throttle. Well, that will do is you land with your back wheels only, and then you start to land with your front wheels. And what that does is it like um, it's a more like comfortable landing, and it like uh, helps with like um, like um, bumpiness, and it'll like slow you down faster. So let's um I, as we just looked, we are on runway 10, uh, 10, 10 left. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Oh, we don't need that. And let's find uh, the airport. So this looks like it's the airport right here. And what I like to do is I like to use this create flight path over here, so we can kind of like draw a line. And then we can clear it, and then we can like draw it, click this button, and then now we can't uh, edit it at all. So what I like to do is I like to create a little like line, and you'll see some YouTubers uh, do this on their time lapses. So I'll create a flight path, and then I'll go um, to San Francisco Airport. And I hate that recentering thing so much. Um, let's get right here, and then so this is runway 10L at KSFO. So I'm gonna place one marker. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the back since we're, remember, we're coming in this way. So, and then um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place another one right about right here. And then I'm gonna kind of drag this, um, and this will all make sense, trust me. Here. I'm gonna kind of, uh, hold lag. Um, I'm gonna kind of drag this out and then, uh, oh, it's actually, hmm drag it in a bit, a bit, just like that, and so yeah, you don't need um, the biggest space in the entire world, um, see right here, and then, um, yeah, that looks, uh, now we could go a little bit, so this, trust me, we're, we're getting somewhere with this, so what this does is this line is perfectly aligned, not perfectly, but like centered with the runway that we're landing on. So now, once we disengage autopilot, if we're having trouble like, uh, like, like figuring out like, am I in the center of the runway, we can just look at the map and once our nose is in the middle of a line, and once we zoom in, it'll make a lot more, uh, it'll be much uh, easier. And it, um, it's really useful once you're like, um, about to land like uh, 500 feet from touchdown. So um, yeah, I've used it um, ever since I started uh, making these routes. So yeah, um, we're in our top descent. Uh, let's queue another time lapse. Okay, so a bit of an update. Um, looks like um, we're getting ever so close to that line. So if we look at our um, Google map, um, the straight line kind of starts off at waypoint norm. So uh, 
Let's look at that. Ooh, there's a big one. Derby. Let's look at that one. PXTO line. Oh, that's not too big one, actually. Okay, so we're gonna kind of, kind of gonna like come out here and then swoop in. So, um, that's um, what we're gonna be doing, and that's gonna be at waypoint norm. So let's check our legs. Norm is in 9.2 nautical miles. And then after that, it's a six mile stretch and then a five mile stretch to uh, the runway. So um, we are descending, we're at like 14,000 feet. And by the way, guys, keep practicing using the altimeter, like just reading it, and then you can read it like, um, you can pretty much read it like it's just a number. And it's not that hard to, um, once you, uh, and you'll be using it a lot, especially when you're climbing and descending, especially when you're descending, actually. So, yeah, um, and our uh, speed got switched over to mock to indicated airspeed, because indicated airspeed is more, like, precise to work with, um, especially when, like, like during descending, and it's easier for speed control to work with. So, you got reduced to 280, and in mock, that's uh, 0.53, so you had a big drop. Um, and so, yeah, you can always uh, check up on your engines right here. Um, and so yeah, um, there's the line, um, pretty straightforward. I'll see you once we're at uh, the waypoint norm. All right, so we're at a uh, waypoint norm in five nautical miles. I'm gonna go into cockpit view, but cockpit less view. And you can just change your camera by pressing C. So this is a cockpit less cam. So this is the cockpit without any controls. And let's zoom in and I think, um, Let's take a look, right over, I think maybe right over here is the airport. Uh, that probably has to be it. Because we're going, yeah, and then we're going to kind of hit hit the norm waypoint. Let's camera reset. And then let's hit, let's see, when are we hitting uh, norm? Three nautical miles, pretty soon. And then we'll kind of get on the line. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, let's check over the map. Uh, Derby, uh, what is it, Stins, then norm. And then, um... X A T T U. So then from there it's pretty straight, and then um, it's then it's just gonna kind of curve it. And sorry for this line. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but um, it shouldn't be much of a, a problem at this point. So we're at we're at like uh, four thousand feet and fifteen nautical miles. There's the turn. So I'm gonna uh, increase um, our height to like a thousand feet just so we don't lose too much speed, just in case we need to like, cause it's easier to drop speed than gain, uh, drop, sorry, altitude than gain more altitude. So let's, um, we'll fill that in here too. Not trying to wait for it. Save. And then, um, yeah, I will respond to that. It looks like we're pretty, pretty good on the line. So let's look at our legs. Um, once we reach this though, um, once we reach our last waypoint and we're straight forward onto it, I'm kind of going to delete, I'm, or not delete, I'm going to turn off autopilot and then manually navigate. Um, again, let's um, go to control or options and control and make sure we're on uh, keyboard. Uh oh, keyboard. And then um, we can turn the mouse back on. So save and close. Open nav. And then let's give uh, one more zoom in. And then once we land all. Um, Sorry, I'll show you about uh, taxing. So, from here on now, I think we have three minutes left, so I won't uh, pause. We'll just kind of keep it going. So, two nautical miles, um, three, two, one. Okay, wait, no, that's two nautical miles. What am I doing? So, um, let's take a look. We're at 3,000 feet. Okay, there we go. So, we're at that runway airport. I'm going to kind of, um, we have it in sight. I'm going to try and uh, get one more zoom in. And then, um, I think right about, I'm going to disengage autopilot now. So disengage will give you that, uh, that feedback right there, that do do do. And then let's switch over to mouse controls. Oop, okay. What am I doing? All right. Let's reduce our speed a bit, cut back on the speed. Because you kind of want to be, instead of being over it, you want to be kind of under it. Like your throttle right here in your mouse. You want to be a little bit under it. So... A lot of people here today. I'm gonna go ahead and put the gear down. Press G, and then for high brakes. And then let's kind of just navigate our way over to the runway. So you can see it right there. And okay, fair warning, I'm a terrible lander. Let's go. Um, since I'm not gonna turn on any flaps. Flaps, um, it'll turn on. 
Flaps are pretty much like the second to all of them when it comes to lightning. Flaps are really important, but since I'm uh, I'm pretty high up, I don't really think I'll need to rely on flaps until it's time for my flare. So, let's, and, okay, yeah, fair warning, I am a very bad lander. Um, alright. Okay, altitude, we're at 1,000 feet right now. Um, again, our rival feet, our rival field elevation is pretty much at, like, about, like, zero, right on the sea. Here we go. Okay, and I'm going to go down to engine zero. And then, all right, let's pull up. Let's put flap one. Oh, this is laggy. There are a lot of people here. My apologies. Okay, let's go push that engine back up. We're a little too far out. Uh, I don't know how this lag will handle. Okay, this is going to be a rough landing. I'm already calling it. Um, let's take a look. We're at 150 knots. Not too good. And let's go engine zero. And then let's pull up. Oh my god, I'm at like zero frames. And touchdown, I guess. Oh my god, that was horrible. Where am I going? Okay, we might... Uh, taxing might be a little bit of a problem. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, this is a slideshow. Are there so many people here? Okay, one sec. I'm gonna pause really quickly. Sorry. And options. And let's kind of just go on. Wait, how do I have nothing? Or is it, is it because I'm paused? Let's go, um... Let's do multiplayer. Um... And turn that off, actually. Holy cow. We're getting two FPS? Oh my god. Um... Yeah, I don't think we really need the map anymore. Let's try and try and close out my tabs. I think my recorder is pretty uh pretty uh heavy. Let's go ahead and turn uh some stuff in the environment, no not environment, graphics off. We have to keep the buildings though, because those are important. Um ooh, let's do um like two. Alright, we got one extra FPS. Oh, no, okay, that's at 7 FPS, that's, that's pretty good. So let's uh, save and close. Okay, this is a slideshow. And then, um, I think taxing actually might be a bit of a problem. Actually, it might not. So, I think our terminal is going to be a little to the right. So we need to follow these blue lines, those are the taxiways. And it's kind of just like driving a car, really. You want to be really slow, and you want to have to be able to use uh, reverse thrust. So reverse thrust pretty much just is like reverse. And um, you can do that by pressing page down, and then page up is, you guessed it, um, uh, normal thrust. So let's unpause and hope for the best. Uh, we're tipping over. Okay, let's just try and uh, turn in. I think there's a taxiway there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the brakes off. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, this, I, you just did a 360. Um, here, how about this? Um, uh, yeah. Um, I think you'll see a taxi in like maybe another one of my videos. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I'll do a, maybe another video on taxi or maybe like a short on taxi. Um, yikes. Um, so, oh my god, even my cameras. Holy guacamole. Okay, it's definitely my recorder because normally I'm getting like really good frames. It's really clean, really smooth landings. So, um. Okay, now it's time for the outro. So, um, stay tuned. Um, make sure to keep on my channel. You can even subscribe and ring the bell if you want to um, keep that updates because I will be uploading a video, actually two videos, on how to make um, FMC routes. One will be uh, a little simple and one will be a little more advanced. So stay tuned and you can make your own FMC routes. Um, make sure to check the description. And um, so now you know how to fly. I rec I highly, highly recommend you join uh, GOFS events Discord servers. So what they do is they'll host uh, events every week, and um, like really fun events. Like um, they'll be like long haul flights. Um, they're doing a world tour right now. So I was just on a long haul flight from uh, Atlanta to Johannesburg, which is near South Africa. It was a long 18 hour flight, but it was really, really fun. So I highly recommend you join the server. They're really creative. The admins are super nice. Um, and it's just a great place to be in. And you can, if you have any questions, 
um, you can leave them in the comments or you could go there and put it in the general chat and someone will be there. Someone or myself will be there to answer for you. So, um, yeah, I want to thank you so, so much for watching. Um, this is a really fun video to make, um, except for the landing. But, um, yeah, thanks again and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.